Are we recording? Yes, we are. We're recording. Okay. Um, and can you check and see just how much of the screen I block when I sit here? Oh, not at all. Okay, great. Because I figured. In fact, seeing your hand in there is actually pretty good. Yes. Okay. Actually, that that's really good that you have this interface because that kind of like shows exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's something that I made recently for a project that I'm being paid for. Um, it's like I have to make a tree. And I was uh, studying another program called Anime Studio Pro, which is very interesting, but I gave up and went back to Flash for various okay. reasons to do what I want to do. So basically I want this to happen. There's, you know, I'm sure there's ways to do this in other programs, but I just gave up. Um, and I realized that one of the great things about Flash is that if all else fails, you can just draw frame by frame. And that, I think, is crucial to any program that I use. Like, it can have a zillion features, um, but I need to be able to get in there and draw frame by frame because I don't necessarily know how to do everything, or at least manipulate frame by frame. Um, and for that, you need good drawing tools. So here's the flash file. Um, I started by, and these are, okay, so these here are, this is my okay. symbol library. That's BG1 for background. That's a background. That's fruit. Uh, this is animated fruit. This is just fruit. This is a leaf. This is the leaf growing. Um, what does that mean? You know, what's the difference between the leaf and the leaf growing? Well, the leaf is what you would expect. It's just a shape. Yep. Um, the leaf growing uh, is also a symbol just like that, but it has animation in it. So every symbol has its own timeline. Hmm. Like so. So, you know, this is, this is the language it's like, I, I need this grammar of symbols where you can nest animation inside of other animation. That's how I build everything. So that tree is built out of little animated symbols doing different things and then being put together. For example, uh, okay, tree four. So I started, I want to say I started with the trunk, but I didn't even start with the trunk. I started with part of the trunk. I started with this spiral. And by the way, as I'm navigating through here, mm -hmm. up here, I don't know if this is cut yeah. off, up here, um, this is telling me where I am. So there's scene one, which has the tree in it, although you can't see the tree. And scene one, frame one, you can't see the tree um, because the tree is growing. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, I'm too big. Uh, so that's scene one, frame one. But anyway, this is, you know, the overall scene. Um, it only has one layer. Mm -hmm. Why does it only have one layer? Because that layer is a symbol. When I click on something and a blue box comes around it, that's yeah. when you know it's a symbol. That's the name of the symbol there, tree four plus leaves. There are two ways I can get into that symbol. One is I can find it in the library and double click, okay. which is like this. Um, if it goes to frame zero, oh good, it didn't go to frame zero, uh, there'll be nothing in it. But the other way I can get to that uh, symbol is by double clicking on it right here. When I do that, it takes me to frame one of it where you don't see anything mm. because it's animated and it's growing. But you can see that this rather, you know, this symbol contains lots and lots of layers layers and folders, lots of layers, and each of those layers contains symbols. So <laughs> I'll double click on this again, and now we see what symbols inside of that. It's another animated one, slightly different color. Um, we're not down to the very basic level of the symbols yet. Right now, uh, here, if I do Command A, we can see all the symbols in it. Okay. So um, here I have the, I animated the tree branches growing in yet another symbol, which is here. 
uh, but these leaves, I stuck all these leaves on here. And the way the timeline looks, there's a lot of layers of symbols. Each symbol has its own layer, but um, this folder, this is the right side of the leaves. So let's see. There are many, many leaves here. And you can't even see them all in the timeline. I mean, yeah. Oops, that's a hair. So returning. Um, what's happening here, uh, let's see, let's just do this leaf here. This leaf, where do we see it? Okay, I clicked on this layer, and that shows me where the thing is. So we can track the life of this thing. Here, there's nothing. Okay. Here is where I inserted it into the timeline at frame 49. It's there, that tiny little okay, thing. Yeah. And then it grows. In fact, this might be easier if I hide everything other than this. So here's our thing. I'm going to just hide everything except for that one leaf. So yeah. the usual hide layers and show layers. I assume that's pretty near or something. Um, and there it is at frame 49. It shows up too small to even see right now. And over the next 120 frames, it grows to its full size. There it is. Hmm. If you double click on it, you get. And I'm going to just zoom in here. Uh, I'll use this. That's way zoomed in. So now we're in leaf one growing, that symbol I showed you okay. before. But I'm showing it to you now in context, so it's, it's angled. There it is. That pattern back here repeats itself like, I don't know, 50 times or something just every single one of these leaves is just exactly the same symbol doing exactly the same thing. The timing is a little different. I mean, the, the start frame is a little different on each one. That's another, you know, that's exactly the same. That's just a fruit. Same deal. Click on that. That's that bit of animation in there. Um, you know, if I want to have more fruit growing on this thing, it's really, really easy to do. I can just, you know, take this and copy it somewhere. I can even, by the way, I love the, you know, option drag to copy mm -hmm. things. Option drag to copy option. things. <laughs> um, but let's say I wanted to have, you know, exactly the same thing happen over here. I just option drag this. Boom, mm -hmm. now I've got two of those things and they're gonna grow in exactly the same way, right? Boom, that's all it took just option dragging that animation. If I go back, oops, if I go back here, you know, I can option drag the whole freaking tree. And it'll have exactly the same animation from start to finish. And I can um, put it on another layer, which I do with a shortcut, shift command D, which puts it on its own layer. And then I can, you know, just move its start frame Let's say there. So it's staggered. Okay. I can also, you know, change the scale. And all the animation will be exactly the same. It'll just be scaled. I can change the color. Um, I'll make this one lighter. And by the way, this is something else that I haven't seen in any other program. Once mm -hmm. something's a symbol in Flash, you have Flash's particular coloring and tinting options. So I can click on this, I can make it brighter. And there's the brightness slider. It's just, um, now it's brighter. Mm -hmm. Or I can change its tint. So let's make it, um, yeah, let's make it more orange. And that just puts a 30% orange tint on everything. I could change that tint to be blue or whatever, I can, you know, increase the, the tintage so that it's solid. Okay, so, so that changes the tint on, on everything as, as uniformly. Yes, everything that's in that symbol, which I used in this tree um, in various ways that you can see. Uh, just undoing now. Um, and then you can also move the entire symbol, so... I could uh, uh, you know, have it stop.
start over here and have it grow or just have it move. I'm just adding a keyframe. Keyframe period in the timeline there. Just move it over here and do your basic what's called a motion tween on it. And it's just doing its whole thing while that's going on. Not that I would ever do that because it looks ridiculous, but um, <laughs> well, you're moving you can. <laughs> and I, I use that all over the place with character animation. This is sort of an unusual sample because it's not it's a tree. character animation. It's a tree, and it's kind of um, not the typical thing people would animate. But um, oh, and the alignment yeah, tools, it has fine alignment tools. Look at this. Align to stage, center, boom. It's now centered. I could also center it vertically. The alignment is like such a great shortcut. So just center it like that. Um, right, but anyway, I want to go into this symbol. Oh, and I need to hide. I'm going to get rid of this layer. Go into the symbol. Hello. Go into the symbol. I double clicking it. Hello, into the symbol. No? You're not cooperating. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we're into the symbol. Just go to the end here. And I'll go into it again. Um, so you can, this is all grayed out. This is the extra spirals that I put on that layer of the symbol. This layer of the symbol is the tree growing in the leaves. Oh, and by the way, by the way, see how this is slightly darker? Mm -hmm. That's because... Oh no, it's not slightly darker. Never mind. Never mind. Um, I thought I put a tip on the whole thing. Okay, this is tree four. This is definitely darker. This is black. Yeah. So what I did in this symbol was I took this tree symbol. All this layer has is the tree symbol. I can make it go away if I want. Um, but I put a tint on it. So as you can see, that's where that 30% orange tint is. Now it's okay. brown. So you, in your sub-symbols, you tint them? And then yes. Okay. It just all carries through. It's just nesting symbols. Um, okay. So here is the foundation of the thing, which is that those growing spirals. And to make life easier and simpler, I will show it to you in another context. So you can see all the grayed out leaves and other spirals yeah. here because of how I entered that symbol. But I'll just go to tree four here. And we have a nice clean one. So, um, you know, I knew I wanted the tree to grow this way with like the same movement used over and over again. And I was like, it just has to be flash to be Flash because that's what Flash is really good at. Let's see. So you can see it's just the same. Well, this one, this one I modified a little bit so it would grow a trunk, but all these symbols are exactly the same, exactly the same animation. Hmm. It's just that they're, they're start, you know, I arranged them. I mean, what, what this made it, it made it really, really easy for me to design the tree. I mean, I could design a new tree because I started by making the spiral. It's like, okay, I know I want a tree made of spirals, and I want the spirals to be growing. So I started by, you know, drawing a spiral. I actually drew that spiral in Illustrator, I think. Uh, it would be really nice if Flash had a, you know, spiral drawing tool and a star drawing tool. It doesn't, but that's not a big deal. Um, and that's, that's actually very minor. Um. So if so, it, it doesn't have uh, a spiral drawing tool. Does is that mean you you can't like do generic like vector graphics with Flash or is it? Oh, you can totally do vector graphics. It's just it doesn't okay. make a spiral. I mean, you got your squares, you squares, circles. So you'd have to do it as like a manual curve. This otherwise. stuff and that and you know this. I'll get into drawing in a minute. Uh, okay. It's just, and for all I know, the latest Adobe Flash does have that. That's okay. like a small thing. I mean, yeah. that's, if Flash, if 
the tool I use never has that. That's fine. I've just noticed that every other tool has that. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so I started uh, with the spiral. Um, actually, what I did, I can reconstruct this. I can reconstruct this on another layer. I'll hide this layer. So um, I started with a spiral like this. And then um, here, this is what's called a stroke. Mm -hmm. I'll get into that later with yeah. uh, drawings. But this is just a single vector with a single stroke applied to it. So if I click on this, it will show you the underlying vector. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the stroke applied to it is, what is this, 20, 20 points, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Whatever that means in a resolution independent program. Um, so here over at frame one, I made it like half a point, 0.5, right? So now it's thin. Yeah. Thin there, thick here. I use the famous shape tween shape to um, just automatically thicken it. Okay. Save me some time. Then what I did was a frame at a time. Add a frame here, and I would erase a little bit of this going backwards. And then I would, you know, add a frame there, and I would erase a little bit more, like that. You know, so so it's so I hand did it growing. Um, and I'm just going to get rid of this layer now because it's just to demonstrate. And now you can see that that's the result. I just nipped away at it backwards to make okay. it grow. You know, probably there are shortcuts to that somehow. Mm -hmm. I was looking at Anime Studio Pro. Um, the deal with Anime and Anime Studio Pro is very, very cool program. Um, it's just that, as far as I can tell, it, it's really not set up for frame at a time animation. And when you make objects in Anime Studio Pro, all you have to you get a certain number of points like. Your object has, let's say, 30 points, and it has 30 points throughout that timeline. You can't be taking points in and out of your object. You can move the points around over the timeline, but you can't do what I did here, which is nip away at it. Okay, so, so, so was it that you were getting rid of specific points that existed, or was it that you were kind of like... Well, the great thing about Flash yeah. Yeah. Um, is it's drawing tools, so I'll just skip okay. to that. Um, Here's Flash. Uh, and actually, I think that that is probably going to be the hardest, fr from talking to The hardest Teo, implement, yeah. Yeah, the hardest thing to do is a great vector drawing program. Um, but man, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so many ways to draw in Flash. One way to draw in Flash is just use the pencil, put a 10, 10 point stroke on it. Just use the pencil, la 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 la. There it is. Um, once you have a line like that, which is pretty nice. I mean, this is like a lot better than a lot of vector drawing programs. Yeah. The ease of use that it has. As I drew this, you know, as I draw, there's a smoothing option. So I have it set yeah. to 50. I could set it to 90, and it would smooth out my drawings as I drew them even more. Um, or I could set it to, let's say, 5, and that will keep in every not every, but that'll keep in lots of wiggles and stuff like that. Um, but let's keep this at 50. Once we have this line, there's lots we can do with it. We can smooth it a bit at a time. Smooth, 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 smooth. You know, you smooth it too much and it gets messed up. Smooth, 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 smooth. Or we can angleify it and make curves into angles a bit at a time, um, all of which is very useful. Freaking great thing about Flash, you draw something, and then you can just pull it around like that. It's so awesome. It's For me, it's the most intuitive vector drawing tool I've ever used. So actually, when I do illustrations, I don't use Illustrator. I prefer to draw in Flash. A lot of people prefer to draw in Illustrator. I do not know why. Flash for me 
is just fabulous. And then you can also, you know, change the width of the stroke. You can change the color of the stroke. All that stuff. That's one way to draw in flash, and that is the least memory into. Oh, you can also change the style of the stroke, which, um, you know, if flash were open source and people could mm -hmm. contribute to it, there would be an amazing array of strokes you could apply to it. But it's not, and I'm using Flash 8, and so I can't use any of that. Um, but let's say I'll make a dotted line dotted there. So now the whole stroke is dotted. If you, you know, are familiar with my work, you know that I use dotted lines oh, all yes. over the place. <laughs> um, oh, great. So this is all strokes. So you know the difference between strokes and fills? That's a stroke. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, then there's this other approach called fills. This still has the stroke on it, but we can get rid of this, and we still have a shape um, that has a fill. So uh, we can edit this the same way. Like so. Um, to see where the vectors are, you just click on that, and that shows you the vector there. That shows you the vector there. That's stroke. That's fill. Um, this is made of points. <clears throat> and if I wanted to go in and edit point by point, I could using this tool. So we'll probably have to, you know what, I can make this outline darker. And we'll make it. So um, this is the you know classic, whoops, classic Bezier edit. Okay, yeah, I was I was about to ask about that. Yes, you can draw that way. You can also draw with the classic Bezier yeah. tool. Um, let me make this black again. Let me go like that. And then you go like that. And then you go like that. I don't really like drawing. With I, like, I prefer to draw freehand than yeah. as it. Well, well seeing you uh, uh, kind of just pick a point uh, somewhere along the line and start dragging, uh, what does that do as far as the points go? Does that like add another point? Sometimes. Um, it does have a bit of a mysterious thought process. So I'll show you. Um, let me just make a new keyframe. Get rid of all this. Um, so let's say. I make a circle, and when I draw something, I can make it empty. So I'm just going to make a nice circle, right? And here are the points. So the basic circle, it doesn't need this many points, right? Yeah. But it, instead of having uh, four points, it has eight points, for whatever reason. That makes sense. Um, now I can edit these four points with this tool, right? And then you would think that it would preserve those four points so that as I edited it some more just by pulling, well, you know that's not what happened. As I edited some more just by pulling, that um, it would be simple. But clearly what happened here is it put lots of extra points in. So let's see if I can just undo a little bit. Okay, so there's my points that I manipulated okay. from the original circle. I click off of it. If I click on it again, no, Flash hasn't added any points yet. All right, but the moment I touch it, Flash, for some reason, is adding points. Okay, and what's that look like now? So you got, um, looks like two more points in there? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, uh, One, three. One, two, three, yeah, three more points. Yeah. It adds a lot okay. of points when you do this okay. hand stuff. And I don't really know, let's see. I don't really know what its logic is, but I don't really need to know what its logic is. Okay. I just live with it. Um, it's not the most important thing. But you can tell it's adding lots of points. Yeah, well, my, my thoughts were more on, on okay, what is it actually doing there? Yeah. I don't know, but boy, do I love Flash. I love it. I love my Flash. Um, okay. Yippee. Uh, other things you can do with the drawing are you can, I mean just with drawing outlines, um, if you zoom in here you'll see that it has square ends. 
I double click it and change the cap to round, now it has round ends. Uh, same with metering, or mitering, how do you pronounce it? I don't make a square like that, that has um, round joins, that has beveled joins, and miter joins. Those are just nice things to be able to control. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so these are uh, strokes and not shapes. If I do anything to this, I'm just changing where the stroke goes. Something essential in Flash that I use all the time is this wonderful thing called modify shape convert lines to fills. So this was a line, now it's a fill. You can see that's still a line, but that just turned it into a fill or shape. So now when I pull on it, that's not going to happen anymore. This is what's going to happen. Hmm. Cool. I love my toy. Ah. Um, okay, so back to strokes and fills and tools. Flash also has a great uh, what's called paintbrush tool, which is like the pencil tool where we drew strokes, but the paintbrush tool actually draws fills. So let's see, paintbrush, come on. Hello, what happened to your pressure sensitivity? You are supposed to be pressure sensitive. What happened? It's supposed to be pressure sensitive. Pressure sensitivity not happening. That's a little weird. Why is it not happening? I'm going to quit out of flash, okay? Okay. is going to be visible here. People are going to see all kinds of things. I don't know what happened. Okay, so here's the brush. Maximum size, it's round. This is the pressure sensitive button. So you can do this kind of thing, hmm. which is yeah. handy. Actually, it's not handy. You know, I almost never use this, actually. But it's cool. It's good to know that it's there. Um, and this, again, is drawing shapes, which are editable. But you know, I wouldn't want to edit my shape like that. So if I drew something like that and wanted to edit it, I would probably click on it and then smooth it out a little bit. Because when you're smoothing it, what you're doing is you're removing points. Like, you know, it has fewer points. I will say that for line stroke width control, Anime Studio is amazing, but I don't know how to actually apply that, and I don't know how it works. Hmm. Once again, change the fill, color, very easily, just anything you want. Um, there's great gradients, so let's give it a linear gradient. 